This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. <laughs> All-Hit Radio. Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Exxon Nation, welcome back. Just when you think you've heard it all, the guest comes on and you say, oh, Lord, here we go again. All right, let me do the setup for you, Exxon Nation. The lady, who I will not name her because I don't want to give her any other publicity than she already was able to squeeze out of us, she, um, <laughs> she wrote a book, a number of books, and they're all religiously, you know, inclined. She's written about Sophie, who she said is the mother of God or the wife of God. I forget. It was so. It was no. That's the son there, Martin. That's the son. Um, and and that. Okay, this is where it really got weird. Like it was really weird altogether. By the way, my guest this hour is Martin Angelo, and uh, I've had the pleasure of having Martin on before. I think he's a super guy. He's done everything from rock and roll. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he, he was a, you were a chaplain in the prison system. Um, you're a born-again Christian. You're a believer. Yes. yes. Uh, you've walked the walk. You've talked the talk. And you know what the heck you're talking about. And you're what I call a non-BS person. Oh, well, that's, that's a compliment, man. I, you know, I, I, I was laughing through your disclaimer, you know, <laughs> because... <laughs> You know, anything we say, folks, we denounce <laughs> it might be true, it might not. Exactly. You we know. don't stand behind it and what this guy says, well but anyway, it's good to be with you. Hey, what can uh, I say thanks, to you? This thanks, is what our, for having this me. is what our lawyer said we had to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, great because like now this lady that you had on, yeah. you know, you could just say, Well, she you know, here she was. You yeah. don't have to we don't stand behind what she said. Exactly. Exactly, right. Be, because, because, just imagine this, just okay. imagine this, here you are, mm -hmm. you go to a whole life expo or something called like that in San Francisco, right. you oh, meet three ladies who have you, you've given clairvoyant readings to, and they mm. invite you out for lunch. You go out to this little bistro with these three ladies, and... You look at the door, and in walks Jesus. There he is. Now, not only does he walk in the door, but he sits right, right at your table. Wow. But you're the only person who can see him. So, uh -huh. in your, in your, wow. in, in your, you, you know, you're so excited that you don't know what to do, so you run to the ladies' washroom. And guess what? Waiting for wow. you in the ladies' washroom, levitating about a foot off the floor is Jesus. Wow. You're kidding. I kid you not. Wow. I kid you not. And according to this lady, Jesus was about six foot, six foot one. Six. I should have asked her if that was with the levitated space or not, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, he, had, he had long hair. He had oh, yeah. blue-gray eyes. He had oh, yeah. brown, dark brown, light brown, and reddish hair. Nice. And he had a bit of a big nose. And no, Did he have a beard? Uh, she didn't say. She, she didn't say. 
Uh, or, or I don't remember because I'm going to tell you something. I was just in awe of that. I was actually talking to yet right. about the 14th million person that I've talked to over the years who claim to have been seen with Jesus Christ, Lady Diana, yes. John Lennon. Uh, Elvis is somewhere out there and that, oh, yeah. uh, that I just didn't ask. But the surprising thing, well, Martin, was mm-hmm. she could not answer me when I asked her, how do mm-hmm. you know it was Jesus? Right. Yeah, like, well, he probably didn't have his card. Well, he not might a, have been an illegal immigrant. He might have been somebody right. you know that was in that San Francisco is a sanctuary city. You know, that so is he, so true. He he might have been uh, without a green card. You know, if if I was ever fortunate enough to have a visitation from someone from up there, down there, or wherever, right? I would question their identity. Well, Absolutely. I'd say Jesus. Can I see your hands? Right. Well, yeah. that's what Philip said. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he asked. Uh, you know, he was he was very very reluctant when Christ uh, appeared to mm-hmm. the forty. When you know he was with them forty days yeah. after he rose from the dead, and and um, they didn't really know him. I mean, I, that's why it's it's interesting when people say that they've seen Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't. You know, I really. You know, God can do whatever he wants. Sure I mean, he can. He, he can manifest himself as mm-hmm. a squirrel if he yep. wanted to. I mean, so you can't you can't limit him or pigeonhole him into, into you know, just what your church teaches sure. or just what, you know, what you might think. Of, you know, he's he's everywhere, can do anything, manifest himself. But I've got to ask you this man. question, but can God get me out of this commercial break? No, he can't. No. So we'll be back no, no. on the other side as we continue here in the Exxon, our special guest this hour is Martin Angelo, and we'll be back talking about the weird, the strange, the bizarre, the real, and the paranormal here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Marty D'Angelo. Angelo is our special guest this hour. D'Angelo, my gosh. (laughs) Marty well, there's Angelo. A, there's a gangster named uh, and, and D'Angelo, right. so be careful. All right, sorry about that, boss. We'll come and get you. All righty. Marty Angelo is our guest. His website is martyangelo.com. And I must tell you something, Marty, that uh, we yes, were sir. talking about that, 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 my last guest. Yes. And uh, by the way, that will be the last time she's on this show. Oh. Yeah, I, no. I know, I know, I know. We could have had a lot of fun, that, you know, but. Um, I would like to be on with her. That would be interesting. You know, one of those uh, three-way calls. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get a good one right, for you. Right, right. right Marty. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway, we were talking. And I should say she was doing a lot of the talking, and I was doing a lot of the interrupting. And uh, finally, when we came back to the final segment, about six minutes, and I asked her again, how did you identify <laughs> Jesus, or how did you know it was Jesus? And the line went dead. Oh, wow. Did yeah. you hang up? I didn't. 
Oh. I never hang up. Well, I do that once in a while, but not. I wouldn't have done it to her because I was really. In, I, I wanted to get an answer. How did she know it was Jesus? Yeah. Well, that Thomas <laughs> asked. You know, he said, "Well, you know, show me your hand." Yeah. Let me see the. Let me see your hand with the with the nails where they had the nails. Mm-hmm. And you know, he says, "Have I been with you so long that you don't recognize me? You don't know." I mean, again, he he manifested himself. Here's here's these apostles that walked and talked with him mm-hmm. for three years, yeah, three and a half years, and yet he rose from the dead, and they couldn't recognize him. They didn't really know who he was. So he, so you know, to say that he was the same in the same body. Uh, you know, he turned us uh, spiritually, could do whatever he wanted, walk through walls, right? All of a sudden he appeared in the, with them and and he walked along the street with them and he manifested himself and they didn't quite know. So he had to explain to them um, quite a bit of information that uh, they didn't quite understand until he said, you know, on that day, yeah. you know, he told them to wait in Jerusalem for uh, power. For the comforter he called mm-hmm. himself and when the comforter came he would he would teach them all things where well, he was referring to you know himself as spirit he says they said well you know show us the father you know come on god let's get down to it jesus show us the father where do you talk about this father and 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 here you are you say you're the son mm-hmm. and then but then again you say that you are the great i am and he says well you know i've been how i've been with you all this time and you don't know me as the father. He says, you know, you see me, you see the father. So he was he was revealing some pretty in, important information to them. And, he, and they said, like, well, you know, he says, well, you'll know. Wait until power comes upon you. Now, they didn't realize when that was going to happen, but he told them to wait in, 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 in Jerusalem. And so off they went. And um, he said, on that day, on that day, you will know that I am in the Father, my Father in me, and us in you, and me in you. I am going to be in you. They didn't know what that meant until that happened, and then it happened on the feast day of Pentecost, which was, uh, uh, you know, very important. If When you study Christianity, it's nice to know the different feasts, because they all have certain, uh, the Jewish feasts have a yeah. uh, certain meaning. And so, of course, the day of Pentecost comes, and then he comes inside of them. And Paul, the Apostle Paul later says, the mystery that has happened is that Christ now is in you, the hope of glory. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being uh, a Christian means that you have the living God of creation, Christ, Jesus, uh, in you. And, you know, we have a bunch of people, uh, like maybe this lady, I'm not sure, but to say that he's a physical person um, that, uh, you know, that's maybe here walking around on earth or up in heaven walking around, you know, God is a spirit. He lives inside of people. So for her, for her to say, you know, gosh, I saw him. He's no longer a physical person. Well, she, that's, she did, she did say she saw him. She saw his spirit. But she described a physical being. She described the the gold that he wore. Uh huh. You know, and it was gold. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So, so, so I mean, maybe maybe she had a certain. You know, he manifested himself in a certain way. But he would that only walk. she saw him, and but that walking. you know, I again, it's hard because I know people that have said. You know, they've seen Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, they were in a foxhole or something, and God appeared to him. And I mean, sometimes you. You know, you, yes, it's it, you should question it um, because, like I said, you know, I wasn't around when God made the earth, so I. I, I you weren't. <laughs> no, oh. no. I mean, I, I remember reading the book of Job. Yeah. You know, and Job thought he knew it all, and his buddies thought he knew it all, and God started asking him questions. Mm-hmm. Where were you when I created the earth? You know, tell me yeah. how do the tides go up. You know, that's that's a hard one to answer. You know, who who made the birds? You know, mm-hmm. where were you when I created uh, rain? Uh, you know, they, it's hard when you try to understand who God is, you know, because it humbles you when when you really start to study and you start to, you know, pray and yep. and, and ask God to, you know, reveal himself. And so and he you, does. You see, another uh, example of, of Christ in you is when uh-huh. you go to the altar and you and you accept the body of Christ. You take it into yourself. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's a teaching yeah. of, you know, I think that's more like a Catholicism teaching. Um, no, we do that in the Anglican Church as well. Ang- yeah, the Anglican, yeah. well, which is kind of an offshoot of Catholicism. Shh, don't pass that rumor around. No, I know it, I know. You know, the Protestants, you know, get mad. <gasps> that's right. When, uh, they, when they know that they came from the mother, <gasps> uh, you know, and so, uh, but they're just, some of their teachings are yeah. just the same as. Oh, you definitely. Know, so, when you cut through all of that, you know, mm-hmm. and that this is why I was very, very upset, Rob, when I became a Christian at, at the age of 35, because I was raised as a Roman Catholic. Yeah. And, you know, I they could never understand or explain a mystery. You know, everything was a mystery. The Trinity was a mystery. You know, Jesus changed into a, the host was a mystery. And everything was this hush, hush mystery. No one could understand or explain it, but you just had to believe it. And so as a young man, a uh, young boy, actually, I wanted to be a priest. Yeah. And stu- I wanted to study to be a priest. I was an altar boy, and you know, I was doing a good thing. And I thought, you know, boy, this is going to be great. Yet there was nobody that encouraged me to, how do you become one, and what do you do? How do you study? You know, because most of the priests that I... I knew that I served mass with were, you know, drunks. They, you know, I'm sorry to say, but you know, actually, my first time I ever tasted liquor or wine was as an altar boy. Wow. Uh, yeah, because they, they made it look so good. Because they used actual wine. You mm-hmm. know, now some churches use, you know, ju- grape uh, juice. juice. Yeah. Grape juice and stuff, but you know, they made it look so tantalizing, and 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 they drank. This one guy, I mean, he, yeah, he must have had a chalice. <laughs> It was the size of like a huge cup of uh, hell. They had two hands. You had to wow. drink it, pour the whole bottle in the thing. And this is eight o'clock in the morning. And anyway, uh, so I stole a bottle of wine and, and me and my buddy went and drank it. And that was the first time I ever got it. That was my first drunk, not my last. But I was exposed. But why I was upset so much as when I became a Christian at 35 was mm-hmm. because my life was a total wreck, Rob. Yeah. Um, I had no idea that I was taught wrong. You know, I just believed like a lot of other people believe because they were told to believe. Mm-hmm. Their parents told them to believe. Who are you to question? Yeah, you know, you're, you're we're up here, the hierarchy, and you're the, yeah. the laity. You know, you're just down here, and you got to believe. You know. And so when your life spins out of I guess it must have been all right for the dark ages when people didn't get educated but you know as soon as you get some education and you start to question a lot of things yeah but I never questioned my faith mm-hmm. other than it didn't work <laughs> you know nothing yeah. happened to me when I took that little host that you said you know you get the body yeah um when I took I must have had it I don't know a hundred thousand times a couple hundred thousand times uh, they never did anything to me. It never changed me. Yeah. It never, I honestly didn't believe that he, that, that host, I don't know how a man has the power to change anything into anything other than abracadabra, hocus pocus. Now mm-hmm. you, here it is. And now you see it. Now yeah. you don't. And you know, this now I have the power. A man has the power to change this little piece of bread into Jesus Christ. Now, wait a minute. I, I think it's just the, the, <laughs> the, um, symbolic, symbolic. It's sim- oh. a symbology. Well, that wasn't what they told me, man. Uh, well, yeah. you know, because you are an Anglican. You were Anglican, right? Yes, you I were. am. I still so, am. So the Catholics, though, mm-hmm. the Catholic Church teaches transubstantiation, that that priest mm-hmm. literally, I mean, literally changes that piece of bread into Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, that's what they tell the altar boys anyway. Well, yeah. that's what... <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know they told... They, my. <laughs> I went to religious schools yeah. too, and they told me in religious schools the same thing. You know, well, and like so, you know, like every organization has different, different rules, different regulations, different beginnings, right? different endings, and this is all religion basically is. It's, an organization. Yeah. Well, that's what it's turned into. It, well, yeah, except today it's turned into a money-making organization. Well, and and the thing is, though, Rob, is that lives are at stake. That's you know, that, true. When, when I, I've been in working in this ministry now, mm-hmm. never planned on being a prison minister or a rehab guy or, you know, any. I, I just was, uh, you know, lost guy that was in the music business. But yeah. I mean, now after all these years, I realize that there's lives at stake. 
and um, there's people dying, overdosing, yeah. and kid, kids, children. There's an opiate uh, over, uh, uh, abuse going around uh, all over the world, yeah. and uh, kids are dying left and right. And so, um, uh, you know, if you have a false religion or if you're living under uh, 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 like a cloud mm-hmm. and you don't really have a grasp of how powerful God really is, you know, because he is a powerful guy. He said, on that day, you will receive power, you know, and that was, you know, power is what people want. You mm-hmm. need power to overcome your problems. You need power to co- overcome your addictions. You can't be, you know, AA teaches you you're powerless mm-hmm. over your addictions and you'll always be an addict and you'll always be this and you're sick, you got a disease, but they don't teach you that you can have, you can receive power. And so this is why I was upset when I learned this at a young, at 35, which is quite old for, you know, learning something new was when I was facing going to prison the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I become a Christian in a farmhouse of all places. Oh my gosh. You know, outside of Buffalo, I didn't have to go to some church I didn't have to go. Believe me, I would have, though, because I was so desperate. Mm-hmm. I didn't go see a priest or a nun. Uh, I, I was ministered by lay people, and they explained that this God, this living God of creation, Jesus Christ, wanted to come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Now, looking at it from a Catholic standpoint, I already thought I had Jesus Christ come into me thousands of times. So I was skeptic. You know, I said, what? I've done this. You know, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. It's different, Marty. It has nothing to do with that host and, and, that, and that religion that you were taught. I, what are you talking about, man? Well, I thought we were the one true, holy, apostolic, only ones going to heaven church. Oh, no, well, you know, things have changed, like you were saying. Uh, you know, business, yeah. it's a business, it's an organization. Things change over the years. What do you, what do you mean, things change? Marty, How stand can... by, my friend. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation, Marty Angelo is our special guest. MartyAngelo.com is the website, and Marty and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everybody. Marty Angelo is our special guest. Um, His website is martyangelo.com. Marty, I love the way that you think. I love the the honesty that you have because your life is based on fact. It's not fiction. You lived the life you talk about. Well, yeah, you know, and that's why, you know, what we were talking about before the break about changing, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you, when you, and I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, when they listen to this, they understand what I'm saying, you know, because, um, we're all searching for, you know, sure, e- yeah. answers yeah. and reasons and whys and what, did, how did I get like this? And what about my kid? He's, mm-hmm. he's hung up on heroin and what am I going to do? I get all these calls, Rob, you know, and I feel bad for these people. And, and, uh, you know, you try to give them answers to help them. What's the truth? You know, I wrote yeah. a book is, uh, uh, about truth and you're trying all your life to believe in something. What's truth, you know? And, and so, um, 
So when I found out this truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ at, mm -hmm. at, at the age of 35, I was facing going to prison the rest of my life. Now, how did I get there? You know, when you start to question, how did I get, where am I? Why am I in jail? What, is, what happened? What, how did I get like this? And, and, and one the psychiatrist call that introspection. You're starting to take a look at your life. And, and so, you, you know, you have to go back to the beginning, how you were taught. Well, you know, I was taught this and that about God. And, I, you, you know, and hopefully by the time you get to a certain age, it'll sink in and you'll go to church and you'll be a good guy. And everything will be fine. Well, that was before drugs. <laughs> I mean, I guess in the 40s and 30s and that, I mean, maybe there was just some drinking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you get strong hallucinogenic drugs and you get uppers and cocaine and pot and you get and you expand your mind, um, you you start to open up um, a whole uh, kind of a can of worms because you're. You realize there's more than just maybe what somebody you might have believed as a child. And so you start to experiment. And so when you come back down to the basic truth of how simplistic the gospel of Christ is, then you have to go, oh, my, maybe I was taught wrong or maybe I taught my children wrong. And maybe my son, who's in prison right now and he was went there because of drugs, maybe my influence on him or maybe I didn't influence him right. Or maybe I just shoved him in a church and hoped that it would rub off on him some way, abracadabra, and maybe he'll change. And so, you know, that that um, that that type of thinking really um, uh, it can be helpful if somebody comes along and gives you some truth and how to fix figure it out. And that's when you were talking about your other guest, you know, she's challenging people's beliefs and all that. But, you know, as long as you keep it scriptural and, you know, that person um, that needs truth in their life is the fact that Christ will come and live in them. See, the mystery that they were talking about that Paul, the Apostle Paul, taught was that Christ comes in you. Mm -hmm. He broke down the wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile, right? God was first, we're talking about God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Jew. And that when they were the chosen ones, right? Everyone else was Gentiles. And the, actually, the Jews were in the beginning, too. But God favored them and gave them the law and all that. And then Messiah was going to come through that, uh, those people. And so the mystery that happened was when Christ, the Spirit, comes in people, he came into Jews and Gentiles. And so... Now we have a mystery that's been revealed that – and he says that uh, we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved and that, you know, to understand that in, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he talked Paul, – talks, Apostle Paul talks, Jesus Christ is in you. Hmm, that makes me stop and think and say, well, wait a minute. If Jesus Christ is in me, well, then where is he? Why are the futurists teaching me that Jesus Christ is going to come again someday in the future – Sometime, I don't know when, but according to Hagee and Swagger, oh, and gosh, yeah. Jimmy Baker and all those types of people and Pat Robertson, uh, you know, they're futuristic uh, pre-tribulation and rapture dispensationalists. And I don't know how they came up with this uh, with this futuristic belief, but a whole bunch of people and the majority of Christianity is believing that someday this physical Jesus is going to come. And, uh, you know, they're going to set up a kingdom somewhere over there in Israel, and they're going to rule and reign. They're going to build a temple, and not everybody, mm -hmm. they're going to be this tribulation. There's going to be a rapture, and, and the Christians aren't going to be here. They're going to be taken out. And I mean, what in the world are they talking about, my friend? That has nothing to do with Christ in you, the hope of glory. I mean, he'd have to leave you and me, if you're believers out there, he would have to leave you in order to come back again. Now, how is that possible? Well, you see, what you're talking <laughs> about, as you explain it, is is reality. But, right. And, and you know what? We are living in such a screwed-up society that yes. people do not want the real story because it no. doesn't sell. Whereas these, these, I'll give you the yeah. you know the these stories about the end of the world, uh, the right. tribulation, the right. four horses, horsemen of the apocalypse, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Man, it's got danger. It's got intrigue. It's got oh, yeah. what if. 
It's mm-hmm. got the supernatural. My gosh, let's throw mm-hmm. in the walking dead zombies and vampires while we're Absolutely. at it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. Once you chase after that, you know, you're going to you'll start mm-hmm. seeing things. You know, mm-hmm. there's the spiritual world and, you know, um, Christ defeated that whole system, that whole spirituality thing with demons and de- devils and mm-hmm. all of that set us free, which comes with sin. When you openly sin, that allows demon spirits and demons to get a hold of your life. And, you know, once he comes in and ch- chases them out and gets out, then all of a sudden, you know, you're free from sin. You don't have to continue in sin like Christ may abound. Yeah. So therefore you can live a good life. But they're not happy with just living a good life, brother. They want the, They want more. Well, of course, so they want a guy, your money. a shyster that comes along yeah. and, and it's half in your pocket and wallet and checkbook and credit card. And he's going to come and tell you, now, wait a minute. You know, that's not enough. You, you only got a taste of something right now. Yeah. What's yet to come. And if you send a hundred dollars, I'll send you a you know, book and, you know, you're going to learn a lot more. And, and then before you know it, you're off and flying, man. And you're believing all of this nonsense and you don't know how to live right today. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we live in the now. You have to stay focused on today. Listen, Rob, I might not make it till tomorrow. I mean, I might die, and there'll probably be some of your viewers may be in, sick and maybe dead yeah. tomorrow. I don't know. But what does that have to do with living? Why would you have some kind of futuristic hope and the four horsemen and, and all of this nonsense, which was dealt, if you read it correctly, he was. they were talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and Israel at the time it was the only city that that uh, crucified Christ. It's not Rome. It's not the Catholic Church. It's not America. It's not some futuristic city. Yeah. It was Jerusalem because Christ said, Jesus Christ said, this generation shall not pass away until all of these things happen to it. Now we've got a guy like John Hagee is telling people, oh, that was, he was mistaken. No, no, he didn't really mean that generation that was living at the time. It's our generation, you see, because look at there's rumors of wars. Oh, and look at there's earthquakes. Oh, my gosh, there's hurricanes and all this stuff that was in the Bible. Yeah, but that pertained to the people that were living then, that he was telling them that all of this stuff was going to happen within that generation. And guess what? It did happen to that generation. He did come and destroy uh, the Jerusalem and the temple and that old religious system. Why? Well, because he was done with that old system, that old way of knowing God and sacrificing lambs and going to the high priest. And, but yet, man wasn't happy with that because, you know, they want to see God. They were like the old Jews that wanted a, a king. Remember, they wanted a king. And so God said, you know, listen, I'm a king. And see, it's, God is invisible, so they wanted to see their king. Like the Gentiles. The yes. Gentiles had all these corrupt kings. And mm-hmm. so, all right, I'll give you a king, but, you know, you're not going to like it. And they didn't. because, But he didn't stop being king. God is always king. He's the king of the world. He's the little king of king and lord of lords. So this king that came to earth and, 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 and to, for ourselves and our sins to mm-hmm. set us free from addictions and everything else that we may get ourselves into, that's it. That's That's your salvation. And so... Uh, the, the the Israel, uh, the Jewish people in that time uh, were fighting against that. You know, the, a lot of them went back to being Jews. A lot of them, the Jews wanted the new Gentiles to be circumcised. They wanted them to not eat certain foods. And, and they were teaching, the apostles were teaching, no, 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 you don't understand this. You know, that old uh, uh, festival type law, not the Ten Commandments wasn't done away with. It was the law that they the Jews were living under the ceremonial laws and, and, and all of that was going to be done away with in the sacrificing of the lamb. We, they had the real lamb of God that came, takes away the sins of the earth. But we're not happy with that kingdom because they're teaching a kingdom is yet to come. Someday in the future, there's going to be a kingdom. Now, wait a minute. If I have Jesus Christ living in me and he's the king of king and lord of lords, his kingdom, you can't have a kingdom without a king. And if that king and if Paul, the Apostle Paul, teaches that Jesus Christ is living in me, that makes him king right now. We're living in the kingdom of God, which is spiritual, because even Jesus said the kingdom of God is, is not meat or drink. It, it's peace and joy and love in the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's what, that's what Christianity should be all mm-hmm. about. But it's not all about that. Now, some people are coming to an understanding of that, the ones that want to take the time and seek and study and 
and follow and, and learn some truth and apply it to their lives. But a lot of people wake up too late and they can't change their kids. You know, their kids are already rebellious. They're yep. already telling them to see you later. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And you're going, wait a minute. I want to tell you about Jesus. Yeah, take your Jesus. You know what you can do with your Jesus? And I've heard this time and time again, Rob. I mean, I, I, you know, and these people are going, Marty, I, you know, gosh, I became a Christian. Isn't this supposed to change? Well, you can't change anybody by direct action. You can't do hocus pocus like the religion. Mm -hmm. See, religion started, it sounded like a pretty good thing. You know, they, they said, well, let's make a religion out of it. And, you know, if you take the seven sacraments and you give the penance and you stand up and sit down and you go to church on yeah. Sundays and you confess your sins and this and that, you should be able to make it to the end of, the, of your life and, or till Jesus comes again. And, but and, but religion, oops. religion, when it was started, had a very crucial sociological role. It meant law and order. Yes, the old Roman. That exactly, was the old exactly. Roman law. But I mean, as they, we, they, but they, as they, society progressed, religion forgot to. Well, they. Well, that's you know, if you look at the, if you look at the old uh, Crusades, mm -hmm. you know, they tried to change the world with the with the sword. Yeah, and you know, it's no wonder that Arabs are all mad and, and Muslims, you know, they're all mad because you know they they had it to them. They got it to them, man. Yeah. You know they. They were going to convert the world to Catholicism in the name of the Lord. The exact and, same you know, thing. And, 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 and you don't do it that no. way. But, uh, you know, that, that system got changed from the old Roman Empire, King mm -hmm. Constantine, and the people that were living at that time. They didn't accept the fact that they took, they took the simple gospel, the Apostles' mm -hmm. Doctrine, out, and they replaced it with their own doctrine, man-made. And no, you got is a whole bunch of problems when you do that. All right, stand by, my friend. You and I have to take our yeah. final break for this hour. Exo okay. Nation, Marty Angelo is our special guest, www.martyangelo.com. And when we come back, we're going to tell you how you can get a copy of Marty's book and a lot more. If you'd like to send me an email, Exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And if you'd like to find out Excuse me, if you'd like to find out about the programming we have on the Exome Broadcast Network, xfbn.net. Gosh, I sounded like a frog there for a second, didn't I? Just call me Kermit from now on. I'm Rob McConnell. Marty Angelo is my sidekick this hour. We'll be back. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.exxon.com. XZBN.net Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Don't forget, Exonation, the current edition of the X Chronicles newspaper is available to you with our compliments and the compliments of our advertisers at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. Dot com. And we also have a new show starting in the next couple of weeks here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. It's, what is it, uh, Powered by the Numbers, 
numerologist Jesse Kelsey will be joining us for uh, for his weekly show, and we're looking forward to having uh, Jesse back on with us. Also, let me see, we're going to be down in Felsmere, Florida, this coming November 3rd, 4th, and 5th uh, for the Power Unity Conference. So that's something else we can keep our eyes on. And um, a lot more to tell you as we get closer to that date of September the 11th, 2017, as we have that major debate. Well, it was going to be a major debate, but since one of the um, participants of the debate decided not to do the debate with us because we were going to do it in an honest and professional format, we were going to be having um, an exposing an exposing party. Hey, the Twin Towers came down on December on September the 11th, so will Billy Meyer and Michael Horn. Ah, Marty, welcome back. Thanks yes. for joining us, buddy. Oh, you're welcome. I, I, I'm, I'm just so glad to be with you. You're such a pleasure to talk to and talk with. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, when, when you hear stories about people like Hagee and all these other false prophets who, mm-hmm. who you know, who take everything they can from whoever they can. How, how do you deal with that as a man who is, is, is truly a follower uh, of Jesus Christ and a person who has devoted much of his life to the belief that he has and to helping as many people as you have? Well, you know, I try to keep it focused, like what we were just talking about before, about mm-hmm. the now um, and, and the present. You know, when um, I... I do a lot of interviews and they ask me, well, you know, what do you talk about when you talk about, you know, when you go to prisons and, you know, I don't talk about this futuristic uh, thing that Hagee teaches, you know, there, you know, there's the major teachings in Christianity that there's only two comings of Jesus, you know, and, and the preterists teach, uh, you know, guys like Donnie Preston, Mm -hmm. you know, that Jesus came in 70 AD. That was his second coming. And then Hagee will teach um, futurism that, no, no, Jesus had, didn't come in 70 AD. Come, he's coming again a second time sometime. I'm not sure, but it's pretty soon. And so now you've got these two teachings. And yet there's scriptures that say, just like we talked about before with Paul, mm-hmm. that Christ lives in you. Now, how in the world did Christ come in you? Is the, do we consider that a coming? If, if he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man answers the door, let me in. I will come into him. So is that a coming? So the Christianity has got themselves in a quandary because they've got these, these they're so stuck on these two teachings that uh, they, they don't know right where Jesus is anymore. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, when he says that, when Paul says that he will come into you, and, you know, if you're born again, I mean, that's, that's what that whole, the whole born again uh, teaching is, is that that uh, if you ask Christ to come into you, he's going to come into you. Well, you know, I ask people, well, who comes into you then when you ask Jesus Christ to come into you? <laughs> I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? Oh, God, Jesus, please help me. Would you please come into my life as my Lord and Savior? Well, okay, you just asked Jesus Christ to come into you. Mm-hmm. Where did he come? Is he where is he? He's in you. So the second coming teachings that everybody's all hung up on that can't explain where Christ is, other than oh, he's two teachings, they get they miss the whole point of Christ living in people and changing people from the inside out. That's the kingdom of God. So that's what I focus on, Rob. Now, some people may say, well, Marty, you're a heretic because you don't believe in the second coming of Jesus. First of all, there's nowhere in the Bible that says that there's a second coming physically of Jesus. He said he would come again. You have to come and destroy that system that we talked about, the Jewish uh, system. The religious system, the, the temple, the uh, and the lambs and all that, and so you know we've got people, even Christians nowadays, waiting to do that again. Oh, I can't wait till the third temple's built so that we can sacrifice lambs. You make a mockery out of Jesus. He never said that. You know, he. That's like saying, well, he didn't mean it. He didn't understand. Jesus didn't understand his coming. Wait a minute now. You now you start to twist the words of Christ 
who you asked to come into your life to change you. Now you're saying he's mistaken. John Hagee is right. Uh, Hal Lindsey is right. Don Preston is right. Uh, you know, the Pope is right. I mean, everything is put off to where you're so confused that you really don't know which way to turn. And I think and that's that, what the problem is today. Everyone is too confused because they're getting too right? many different stories. That's right. And so, so you have to be able to discern the truth, believe that Christ, mm -hmm. uh, what he said. That's what, see, that, that goes back to believing Christ's words. Now, Hagee will say he's mistaken or he didn't mean that generation that was living then. He means our generation. Right there, you just insulted the king of king and lord of lords by saying that he didn't mean that generation. Then he has to go back and apologize to all those people that were living in that generation that were expecting that to happen within that generation, mm -hmm. and it did happen in that generation. That's like saying that that didn't happen. That didn't made that generation. It just didn't matter, you know, because he was not referring to that generation. He was referring to some future generation, our generation. Now, how about that Harold Camping when he was alive? Oh my! He was gosh, saying yeah. Jesus coming on May twenty first, and I challenged him to ten thousand dollars. I said, I'll bet you ten thousand dollars he's not coming on May twenty first. But how many people that, was he able to get money out of? Lots. Yeah. He made millions. They, the guy should have been thrown in jail. I mean, he looked, he's like a Maddox. What was that guy that... Uh, Bernie Madoff. Uh, <laughs> Bernie Madoff. Yeah. I mean, he was worse than Bernie Madoff. He took people, people sold everything they owned and were waiting in some shack or yeah. something on some mountaintop, uh, waiting, oh, well, he's coming. And they put all, they bought, they said... They spent their money on bought big billboards with the Jesus is coming and and be ready and 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 they put the fear of God. I remember going to a football game once. There were these two guys with these signs that Jesus is coming back soon, and I started talking. Went, oh no, you know I got to talk to these guys, <laughs> and, and we got into this debate. I said, well, where's Jesus now? And he couldn't answer me, just like that lady that you talked about. Right. What you know? Where is he? What? Uh, how do you know it was him? How do you know he's coming back mm -hmm. again? Well, it says in his word, in this generation shall not pass away. What generation are you talking about, yeah. pal? Well, ours, because, I, you know, our church teaches that. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd quit that church, my friend, if you're going you're gonna to believe something that's not true. Why would you want to believe things that's not true? People love that, man. People love darkness. They, they sure. want to live in darkness. Well, you, They'd you, rather live in darkness. It's easier. You know the facts. You've been <laughs> in the media. You've worked with people. If it bleeds, it leads. That's right. That's right, man. And, and, and how could that be? How could my Bible be right? How could Jesus' words be right? We didn't see him. We don't see him. Where's his kingdom? I want to see him. I want to. Uh, that's why they believe that they're going to set up some kind of kingdom over there in Israel somewhere. Oh, we want to. We're going to see the king. I, I, I heard this one preacher say, "I can't wait till Jesus comes so I can smell him." I looked at the guy and I went like, <laughs> "You're not serious, are you? You really believe that you're going to? You want to go and smell him?" And the new aftershave for the day is, <laughs> "I smell like Jesus, made from the waters of yeah, the I, Sea of Galilee." Can I get that Jesus spray? <laughs> hey, listen. But I mean, that's that's how ridiculous yeah. it is, brother. I mean, whoo! Who would have ever thought that I'd be thrust into this type of thing, man? I just wanted to not go to prison when I prayed Jesus to come into my life, help me. But but I you want to be defending you're, the gospel? <laughs> but you're 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 not defending the gospel. You're defending Jesus. Well, that's the gospel. I mean, you know, that, that's him. And all, all, you know, we're all into one. And I mean, you know, that's why I'm, you know, you're, you're interesting because you go off into these different, you know, beliefs that people have. And this is how far you can take it. Yeah. You know, you, you're believing in stones and things and crystals and, oh, my gracious. And going after, uh, oh, I saw a ghost. I remember my ex-wife. I mean, she, she would go off some Steubenville, someplace where they were seeing they were seeing UFOs, and they, they all got together, and they were looking for UFOs. And, and I said, what about Jesus? Then when I became a, a, a Christian, I tried to tell her about Jesus. She, she called me the devil. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You're, you're the Christian, uh, and you're the devil, but she's the person out there looking right. for little things in the sky. Right, okay. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, because that 
there's people are so sick when especially ones that were kind of raised it in the old 50s mm -hmm. you know when they were it was the they raise you in a church like the Catholic. That's why I have to go back to my Catholicism. I mean, I love my friends that are Catholics. I don't yeah. know many of them that are still Catholics, but uh, you know that that was they would beat you. I never knew that God loved me. I never knew that Jesus had a plan and purpose for my life. I never knew that I could meet him other than some host mm -hmm. and some priest that used to, you know, could be drunk. And, and it was a, one was a pedophile was feeling up little boys. Oh. And, and, you know, so these are the things that people have burned in their minds and they don't want to have anything to do with God if that's the case. And mm -hmm. they'd rather believe in a stick or a stone or, or a UFO somewhere. Anyway, you know, buddy, I hate to do this, but time goes <laughs> by so fast when you're with us. You'll have to come back in. We've got so much Absolutely. more to talk about. Take care of yourself, Marty. I, I love you, brother. I love you too, My pal. My books are available on, on Amazon. If you if you're interested, they got nine books out there. So, well, we're going to plug yourself. your we're going to plug your books. And uh, Marty, take care of yourself. All right, thank you, brother. Bye, bye, pal. Thanks for having me. Always a great pleasure. Exo Nation. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Thank you.